This lesson is about phytomining and bioleaching. These are alternative methods to extract copper from copper ore. Before you start, I'd like to see what you can remember from previous C4 lessons by answering these questions. So if you'd like to pause the video now. So how do you extract copper from copper oxide? You can use carbon to reduce the copper oxide because carbon is more reactive than copper. Write the half equation for the oxidation of a chloride ion. Well, our chloride ion is Cl minus and we know that we are losing electrons to form the element chlorine, so I'm going to end up with Cl. If you remember, chlorine is one of the halogens, it's in group seven, so it's diatomic. It exists as Cl2 as chlorine, chlorine molecules. That means to, to have two atoms in a chlorine molecule, I'm going to need two chloride ions, and each chloride ion needs to lose an electron. And I know this is the oxidation because oil rig oxidation is a loss of electrons. Write the half equation for the reduction of a sodium ion. So my sodium ion, Na+, I know that I'm going to, to, look, to gain electrons in a reduction and end up with a sodium atom. And Na+, it's going to need to gain one electron to become the sodium atom. And I can see it's reduction because reduction is gain of electrons. What would be produced at the electrodes in the electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate? Now, copper sulfate contains two ions, copper, Cu2+, and the sulfate ion, SO42-. It's a good idea to remember that sulfate ion to learn that off by heart. Because it's aqueous, I know that it's dissolved in water. So the water also provides two ions to that solution, H plus and OH minus. So my cations, my positive ions, are Cu2 plus and H plus. So one of these is going to be produced at the cathode, the negative electrode, and it's the least reactive. And copper is less reactive than hydrogen, so at the cathode, we get copper. The anions, the negative ions, SO42- and OH- are going to be uh, going to move towards the anode, the positive electrode. At the positive electrode, I will always get a halogen if I have one of the halide ions, one of those ions from group seven, like chloride or a bromide ion. But I don't have a halide ion here. So if I don't have a halide ion, what we get forming at the anode, the positive electrode, is oxygen. So the title of this lesson is phytomining and bioleaching. And we're going to have a look at what they are and we're going to describe the processes of phytomining and bioleaching and also look at the advantages and disadvantages of the different methods of extracting copper and evaluate these methods of metal extraction. This is a copy of what is on the specification for phytomining and bioleaching. It's actually from C10, but we're teaching it in C4 because it fits in well. In C4, we're teaching about the electrolysis um, of metal compounds to extract metals, and we're teaching about reducing metal oxides using carbon, and phytomining and bioleaching are an alternative way of extracting metals from ores. So copper ores are becoming scarce, so they're running out, and these are new ways of extracting copper from low-grade ores. Now, a low grade ore is an ore that has only a small percentage of copper in it, whereas a high grade ore would have a much larger percentage of copper. Phytomining uses plants to absorb metal compounds and bioleaching uses bacteria. And you need to be able to describe both these processes. So copper has many uses in today's society. We use it for electrical wires, so the wiring in your house it will be copper. Will be copper. 
It's used for water pipes. It's unreactive, so it's not going to react with the water in the water pipes. And of course, it conducts electricity, which is what makes it such an excellent choice for electrical wiring. It's used in motors. So, for example, a motor from, electric, from an electrical car will contain copper. And it's, there's an example of copper roofing here. There's quite a high demand for copper. Carbon is above copper in the reactivity series. So we can reduce copper oxide using carbon to extract the copper. And this is what we do with high grade copper ore. When we heat copper oxide up with carbon, it's called smelting. And that is a way of extracting the copper. Now, copper mining involves digging, moving and disposing of the waste rock. So these are open pit copper mines and we're literally digging out copper ore. So rocks containing copper from the, the crust of the earth. There are large amounts of waste rock in this process. It creates large holes in the earth's crust. It requires an awful lot of energy. We have to power the machines that are used for digging and transporting the copper ore. And it's only worthwhile extracting high grade ores. It's only economical for us to use smelting to extract the copper from the ore when there's a large percentage of copper in the ore. The advantages of this method of extracting copper are that a lot of copper can be extracted from the open mining. It makes a lot of money for the company and government, provides jobs for local people. And the disadvantages are that it's dangerous. It creates pollution from cars, dust and noise. So you wouldn't want to live near um, a copper mine. And it requires energy to extract copper from the ore, which creates carbon dioxide. So if we're using fuels um, to provide us with energy, uh, a product of the combustion of those fuels is carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Now these are high grade copper ores. So we have chalcopyrite and malachite. Chalcopyrite is copper iron sulfide and malachite is a copper carbonate hydroxide. We're running out of places to get high grade copper ores. These are finite resources. We're finding them in the Earth's crust and eventually they will run out completely. For low grade copper ores, it costs more to extract the copper by smelting than you get for selling it. So it has a low grade copper ore only has a small percentage of copper um, for in the actual ore itself. Phyto mining is a process that uses plants to extract metals. So phyto mining is a way of extracting copper from low grade ores. And it's from a Greek word, um, phyton, meaning plant. And mining is, uh, the origin's uncertain, but it was a pit or a tunnel uh, made for the purpose of obtaining metals and minerals. So in phyto mining, the first step is that plants are planted in soils which are copper rich. There's lots of copper ions in these soils and they are absorbed by the roots of the plant. Then the copper ions travel to different parts of the plants where they are stored. So they accumulate in the plant tissues. They become part of the plant and these plants are called hyper accumulators and they collect the metals in their leaves. Now, copper ions can be toxic to some plants, but other plants like our hyper accumulators will store these copper ions. Next, the plant containing the copper ions is burnt. When the plant is burnt, the copper ions in the plant react with oxygen in the air. And this forms copper oxide. Copper oxide is a black solid and we have this ash now from burning the plant that contains the copper oxide. We can react that with sulfuric acid and that will give us a solution of copper sulfate, which is this um, clear blue colour. We have done this 
in the chemistry lab. So we, as a required practical, we took copper oxide, a black powder, and we reacted it with sulfuric acid. And that produced the copper sulfate and water. What we will have done is we will have filtered the copper sulfate solution to get rid of the excess copper oxide. And once we had this clear blue solution, we heated it up using an evaporating basin and probably left it on the side for a couple of days to produce copper sulfate crystals. Now we can extract the copper from the copper sulfate solution using electrolysis. So the copper ions will move towards the negative electrode and copper will be produced because we have copper ions, Cu2+, in the copper sulphate solution and at the negative electrode they gain electrons to form copper metal and we've extracted copper using phyto mining. I'd like you to have a go at this video to describe and explain the process of phyto mining and have a think about the advantages and disadvantages of phyto mining. So if you pause the video now. OK, so plants absorb copper compounds through their roots. That would be one mark. The plants are then burned. So the copper ions react with oxygen. This produces ash that contains the copper compound or the copper oxide. So the advantages are that this uses low grade copper ore. It requires less energy than smelting, so it will be cheaper and it produces less air pollution. The disadvantages are the burning process particularly can produce toxic chemicals. It's a much slower process. It takes much longer. And electrolysis requires large amounts of electricity. So this will cost money to generate that to generate that energy. The second alternative method of metal extraction that we're going to look at is bio leaching. And this is a process that uses bacteria to leach metals. Leaching is when soluble chemicals and minerals drain away from um, from soils in the water. So it comes from an old English word meaning to wet or irrigate. So bio leaching uses bacteria to produce leachate solutions that contain metal compounds. The bacteria are mixed with the low grade copper ore and they produce a leachate. A leachate is simply the solution we get when a liquid passes through an organism and the leachate will contain the metal compound for example, copper sulfate. So iron is more reactive than copper and there is lots of cheap scrap iron. So you can see here that iron is above copper in the reactivity series. That means that we can use iron to displace copper from the copper compound that is in the leachate. So the copper compound from the leachate I have here is copper sulfate, our clear blue solution. We add the scrap iron. The iron will displace the copper from the copper sulfate and we have iron sulfate and our orangey brown copper metal, which has been extracted. Another way to extract the copper from copper sulfate is to use electrolysis. So in electrolysis, we know our copper iron will go to the negative electrode, the cathode. It will gain two electrons and form copper metal. Bio leaching is, is very economical. It's a very simple process, so it's cheaper. It requires fewer specialists. It can be used for extracting copper from low grade ores and it's environmentally friendly, so less damage occurs to the environment. It is a very slow process, though. It can take up to two years, and that means it can, there can be a delay in getting any profits from manufacturers. And it can also produce toxic chemicals such as sulfuric acid that can leak into the water. So I'd like you to pause the video now and have a go at this question. So bio leaching. What is bio leaching? 
Describe what the leachate is and how it is formed, including the types of organism involved. And evaluate bioleaching. Give three advantages of leach bioleaching and three disadvantages of bioleaching. Okay, so if you grab your green pen, bioleaching is the extraction of specific metals from their ores using bacteria. This should be question two. The leachate is a solution that contains the copper compound. It is produced by bacteria and is formed when a liquid passes through an organism. And the advantages of bioleaching are that it is a simple process, it is a cheap process, you can use low grade ores, it's environmentally friendly so there's fewer waste gases produced. The disadvantages are that it is a slow process, toxic chemicals are produced and it has a low efficiency. So the, the efficiency of the bacteria converting the copper ore into a copper compound in the leachate is very, very low. I've just included a, a, an evaluation there for you to compare bioleaching and phytomining. Um, you can pause the video and, and have a read through.